So I want to introduce the equal marginal principle, which I consider the most important idea in this course in environmental economics and policy. So if you've been sleeping until now, now's the time to wake up. Understanding this is going to help you understand why economists favor market-based environmental uh, policy solutions like tar emissions tax or carbon tax, permit systems, uh, all of the niceties and the benefits or the, the advantages to those policies relative to command and control uh, stem from this equal marginal principle. I'll write down the definition, then we'll talk about it. Here's the principle. To reach an emissions abatement target in the least cost way, which also means cost effectively, using the least resources, the marginal abatement costs, the max of all firms, right, if we're talking about regulated industry firms, will be equal at their choice of emissions. Doesn't mean they'll have all the same marginal abatement cost functions. And in fact, the presumption is that there'll be heterogeneity and differences in those. This is saying at their choice of emissions, the marginal abatement costs for all firms will be equal. So what I want to do to help solidify understanding of this concept is do a number of examples. The first example I'm going to use is in tabular form, and it's in a table, and we can kind of walk through how meeting an emissions target in the cheapest way requires that the firms, and it'll be two firms in this case, have equal marginal abatement costs at their choice of emissions. Guys, look at my fancy table I just drew. Uh, this is a table where we have the first column uh, of emissions, units of emissions, you could think metric tons. Um, the second column is the marginal abatement cost for firm one. You can see it starts at zero. And so in an unregulated world, given this table, you could just infer it. The unregulated total emissions, remember is firm one's unregulated and firm two's unregulated. And we could just infer from the way the mechanics of the table work that this would be 16. And we know that because when zero, marginal abatement cost is zero, you could think that's their, their marginal abatement cost curve, that's where it intersects that horizontal axis. And so in a world without regulation, each firm is emitting eight units. Now let's think about reducing emissions from 16 to, we'll call this T, our emissions target, to 10. So we want to abate six units of emissions. So using the table, what's the cheapest way, the least cost way, to move from a state of the world, the unregulated state of the world, 16 units of pollution to 10. How do we abate six units in the cheapest way? So let's just manually go through the table and see how that works out. You can see that firm two has a lower marginal abatement cost at each unit of emissions. And the other thing to notice that for both firms, the marginal abatement cost increases, right? We have an increasing marginal abatement cost as abatement levels increase, right? Our emissions levels go down. That's the idea of First units of abatement are going to be the cheapest. And so from moving from eight to seven, that first unit, you could think that, okay, well, firm two can do that the cheapest. And if we're trying to determine how we get there, how we get this target in the least cost way, well, that would be the first unit, cheapest way to get it, the first unit. And then the second unit of $10, that's kind of a tie, two's second unit of abatement and firm one's first unit. And so we can put that third unit, remember we need to get to six units of abatement, and then the fourth unit, 15, is, is less than 20, so we could say that. And then let's say that this is the fifth unit, and then this is the sixth unit. All right, so this is the cheapest way to uh, abate six units of emissions. We're going to pop in the total abatement cost. That's just kind of manually uh, the cumulative, right? So 5 plus 10 is 15, plus 15 is 30, plus 20 would be 50, 60, plus 20 would be 80. So in total, we got, so in total, the cheapest way to abate the six units of emissions would cost a combined $80. All right, but let's examine what each firm is doing. So if firm one abates two units of emissions, then firm one, to meet this target in the cheapest way, would actually be emitting six, so it, it, it reduced by two. And firm two, under our emissions target, we know would be abating at the four units, right? So it moves from seven, six, five, four. And so that's how we're getting to our ET of 10, is that that would require uh, 
the emissions level for firm one to be six, and the emissions level for firm two to be four. But most importantly, last but not least, what does this mean in terms of the marginal abatement costs of each firm at their choice of emissions? And we see that the marginal abatement costs are both 20 for firm one and two at their choice of emissions. All right, so through this example, we kind of see how this plays out, but what's the intuition? I think the intuition is very, it's very simple. If the marginal abatement costs of the firms at their choice of emissions are not equal, right, then it means that somebody or some firm can do it cheaper than another. And so as long as there's that ability to do something cheaper, then if you don't exhaust that so that the marginal abatement costs are equal, then you're kind of leaving money on the table.